Hi, David Dodge here. Welcome to Green Energy Futures and part three in our Chasing Net Zero series. This week we look at the evolution of net zero homes from incredibly complex shrines to technology to simple, elegant and super efficient homes. We explore the near net zero home of Shafraz and Serena Kaba in Beverly Heights in Edmonton, Alberta. Shafraz is an architect and the home that he designed and built for his family is a great example of the net zero form at a very important crossroads in the evolution of net zero design. We designed a home that is uh, attempting to achieve net zero. Hopefully one day it'll be fully net zero. Right now we're net zero ready and uh, we've essentially designed a passive house uh, that takes advantage of its site, uh, of the natural capital, of, of what we have around us. Instead of focusing on complex technologies, a passive house is an airtight, super insulated home that harvests as much passive solar energy as possible. Combine large south facing windows with a thermally massive floor and window shades and you end up getting a lot of your heat for free. Serena Kaba explains. Over here you can see how we have very thick walls and these are super insulated. So this is part of our passive solar aspect of our house. And these are our triple paned windows. So we gain the heat from the sun through these triple paned windows and it heat sinks into our floor, which is cement. So in, at night when we are not having the sun because it's night, then the heat comes out of the floors and heats up the house a little bit. And of course, because these are so thick and super insulated, it helps to keep and trap in that heat. For backup heat, they have a fireplace and electric baseboard heaters. By using electric heat, they avoid the need for a natural gas furnace and the monthly bill that goes with it. Doubling down on insulation is one of the key reasons this home requires so much less energy to heat it. So here we have two cutouts in our walls, which are very, very thick, and it gives you a visual to see how far apart everything is and our super insulation. It's an R of uh, 60, and you can see here is our vapor barrier as well, which is another key point in keeping the house airtight as possible to trap in all the heat when we want it. This large, narrow, three-story home sits on a corner lot. It has excellent solar access and a small footprint for a 2,400 square foot home. By putting the living room and kitchen on the second floor, they get superb views of Edmonton's River Valley, the downtown, and even Refinery Row across the river. Once you've paid for your solar modules and designed your home to collect passive solar heat, the sunshine provides free energy for the entire life of the system. Here we have our uh, solar panels or photovoltaic panels. There's uh, 16 of them creating a 4.8 kilowatt array. Uh, and basically uh, the, these panels are also our awning for our large windows below. By shielding the house from direct summer sun, the solar modules provide passive cooling and they also generate electricity at the same time. And it's the passive systems that really distinguish Shafraz and Serena's house. By conserving energy and getting as much free energy from the sun as they can, they get almost half their energy from that small 4.8 kilowatt solar array. In the reality of fluctuating electrical utility costs, that's, that's huge. So we, you then give yourself sort of, a, a, I guess, a, an insurance policy of, against rising in, um, electrical costs. And the cost of the PV now is uh, at a point where it, it, it's almost a no-brainer to implement. Shafranz and Serena will probably add more solar modules in the future as finances permit. My favorite parts of, of the house are all of the places where we've reused and repurposed materials and all the wonderful stories behind that. For example, our walls are about that thick. And so they're the perfect distance to put the bottom of these church pews that we've repurposed. Indeed, there are many examples of very innovative reuse of materials, including bricks from the original farmhouse on the property, an old gym floor used as a feature wall, cooler doors that conceal a pantry, and leftover structural materials that were used to make the stairs. 
To learn more about Shafraz and Serena's near net zero home, check out our blog, photos, podcast, and resources at greenenergyfutures.ca. Next week, the final episode in our Chasing Net Zero series. We call it Go Big or Go Home as Net Zero Goes Big Time. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.